For the fastest, cheapest, and most reliable coins in the market with a no band guaranteed delivery, check out my coin sponsor, MOXP.com, and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff at the Mad Cheese, as always. In today's video, I have some CFM franchise tips that you guys can use to turn any team into a dynasty. Basically, the tips I'm going to show you guys are going to make your salary cap better, your uh, draft class is better, everything you need to do to basically improve your team to the point where you should have a good enough team to win in just about any league. But before I do, if you guys want to see more videos like this, please make sure to be a subscriber. Hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. And if you want to see some rebuild teams uh, videos, which is something I plan on doing, let me know in the comment section what teams you'd like to see me rebuild because I was thinking about doing this in the off season. And I'm going to start off with one of the worst teams in the upcoming game in Madden 25, and that is the New York Giants. I picked this team because they're a specifically difficult challenge, but I'm going to show you guys how you can turn this into a really good team and maybe like an off season or two. The first thing you're going to want to do with any new team that you're using is you're going to want to trim the roster. You're going to want to cut the fat because there's a lot of opportunities to help your salary cap by getting rid of players that really aren't doing much other than just taking up a space on your roster. So this particular team is going to have a lot of challenges because you've got guys like Daniel Jones who would have a massive cap penalty if you wanted to try to cut him. Um, that's something that you know, I'm going to have to deal with. But before I even get into all of that, I'm going to first want to have a plan because you really have to know what type of offensive scheme and what type of defensive scheme you're going to run before you can build a team around it. Now, say you're more of a passer or more of a runner. You know, if you're more of a runner, you're probably going to want more than one running back. And this is all, you know, this is all something that really depends on what type of league you're in. If you're in a league that has injuries and fatigue penalties and stuff like that, you might need more than one running back. But if you're in a league that doesn't have that turned on, they turn that off, you only really need one running back because you're not going to need a backup. So stuff like that you're going to need to know. But this is more specific. When I talk about knowing or having a plan, I'm speaking more about on defense. Uh, you know, if you run cover two a lot, if you run cover three a lot, if you run a lot of man coverage, if you run a three, four, a four, three, you got to know all this stuff before you try to build a roster around it. On offense, you really just want weapons. You know what I mean? It's like that's not too difficult. But when it comes to defense, you got to know what type of scheme you're running before you know what particular positions you value. And that's really going to help as far as um, trying to figure out how to how to turn this team into something that can really compete. So figure out what type of scheme you run first and then build it around that. I'll tell you guys personally, I run a... Uh, I like to throw the ball a lot. I like to run cover three zone a lot. At least currently I'm running that a lot. So I'm going to try to build my offense and my defense around those philosophies. Now, starting off with the roster itself, uh, before you cut a bunch of people, it might be a good idea to go through the free agency roster and see um, what you can pick up. But if you're in an online league, you're not going to have that opportunity right away. You're just going to have to you know, cut your roster down before a lot of times people open up free agency to the league at the same time so people can get in and just pick people up right away. But you can go into the free agency market and at least see what's out there. Like I said, for me personally, if I could try to find a halfway decent young quarterback on the market, which is going to be difficult, I might try to do that. But realistically, given the contract, I might have to try to build, um, you know, I might have to try to build Danny Dimes. But first of all, if I am going to try to pick up a long-term solution, there are a couple things that I'm going to be looking for to do that. Number one, I'm going to want a quarterback that has good throw power because that's something you can't really fix too easily. I mean, you can over time um, through, you know, getting uh, points and improving your player, you can get your throw power up to a point where it can improve slowly. But if I'm going to try to find a cheap option somewhere, then I'm going to try to improve who I have, you know, my quarterback position. I'm going to at the very least going to want physical attributes that match my play style, which is going to mean throw power rating number one. And after that, probably speed. And that's going to go for just about every position, including things like receiver. I'm not going to pick a guy who's too slow. I'm going to want to go for guys that are really fast. I'm also going to want to try to get young guys because if you have a team like this, you pretty much know that it's going to be a long-term build or to the point where you're going to need a couple years to build. So young guys definitely increase in ratings faster because if you pick, you know, let's say let's pick this, you know, Anthony Schwartz, who's 22 years old, you can see he only really needs 4,000 XP to get to that next overall point and get you, you know, the ability to improve him. Where compared to an older guy, 
Let's go ahead and let's pick, um, you know, somebody a little bit older, like Odell Beckham, who's 30 years old. He's already pretty highly rated, but you're not going to be able to improve him because he needs 26,000 XP to get to that next level. It doesn't matter that he's a star development and that he might develop faster. That's still going to be very difficult to get to that number. So he's pretty much, at this age, he's pretty much locked in at that 81 rating. So try to focus on younger players, getting younger, but always make sure that you want to, you know, keep the, the things that don't improve very easily, things like speed. You want to keep that to a point where you're trying to pick those guys first guys like things like height speed uh, acceleration agility physical attributes are things that are very difficult to change uh, at least you know massively you know what i mean like you can still uh improve speed ratings or throw power ratings like i said on quarterbacks there are ways to do that but it's usually pretty slow and i'll show you guys how to do that as the video goes on so now that i have an idea that hey you know there are some decent speed guys on the market there aren't really any quarterbacks you know you want to go through the market and at least see what's out there so that you have an opportunity you might not be able to get all the players you want but at least get an idea of what's available before you make your roster cuts so now that I have my, my scheme, I want to pass, I want to throw the ball deep down the field, and I want to play cover three blitzing defense, I know exactly what type of uh, roster that I want to build. And I'm, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to find where can I save as much money as possible on this roster. And I'm going to want to cut this roster as lean as possible. Now, a player like this guy here where there's no saving, no penalty, I mean, he's not really going to play for me anyway, so I can just cut him. It doesn't really help me or, you know, do anything like that. But it's something that, you know, when it gets to the end of the year, it might be a value because I'm sure he's getting paid something. And whenever you cut a player, whatever his salary cap was, you will at least get that money back and rollover cap in the next season. Now, Gary Brightwell is a perfect opportunity to get almost a million dollars back. And since he's only an 86 speed, I know I'm never going to use this guy. So since he only, the penalty is only 80K, he's getting me close to a million dollars. If I can do this 20 times, that's $20 million. You know what I mean? If I can find 20 players on this roster that are getting paid something similar that'll save me that much money, I'm going to cut him every single time. A guy like Eric Gray is another one, although that's not a huge saving. It's only about a half a million, so I'm not too worried about that. But it really depends on what my roster looks like. He's another guy that, you know, he's not really doing anything other than taking up a roster spot, so that's something I would definitely get rid of. So I can release him, save about a half a mil there. I'm already, you know, between this, those two players, just my running back room alone, I just saved about a million and a half going into next season. Now, Matt Braid is a different story. Because of his 93 speed, and he's only 28 years old, by the way, he's a good trade candidate. There might be somebody out there willing to give me like a third or a fourth round pick or you know something of that nature uh, from another player in the franchise that might be able to give me something based on the fact that you know that's very attractive. To have a 93 speed, 94 acceleration running back on any roster, especially in a first year where you don't have an offseason to really go out and try to find players like this in the draft or whatever. This is a guy that has value. So when you're making your cuts, don't just cut people based off of, okay, I'm, I'm not gonna use them. Because let's say I'm not gonna use Matt Breda, but somebody might want that speed. So you have to at least assess value in what's on your team. So Matt Breda, if I'm in a league, like I said, if I'm gonna run the ball a lot since I have the Giants, which is possible, or if I'm in a league where the fatigue is to the point where I might need a second running back, then he will have value to me. But if I realize that I don't have, he doesn't have value to me, so I'm not going to run the ball a lot, say fatigue's turned off in my league, then a 93 speed running back has value and I can get a draft pick for that. Uh, same thing goes with quarterbacks. I don't really think there's any good quarterbacks on this roster particularly, um, but I haven't really looked yet either. I don't know if Drew Locke would have value to somebody. He might have value to me because he is 26. He's cheap. I don't know. He's an, ID, he's an option to build up. His throw power is a little bit better uh, than Danny Jones. Uh, his speed's similar. Uh, but I still feel, like I said, with, with, Danny, with Danny Dimes, you at least have a decent set of accuracies. And I still feel like since you're locked into him, I still feel like Danny Dimes is worth exploring. I might be able to build him in the first year before I get to the draft to the point where I'll have to make a decision if I want to continue with Danny Dimes. So that's kind of the position that you're stuck in with the Giants. But either way, um, you know, that's that's pretty much how my quarterback position is going to look for the first year. Now, getting moving on along, like I said, I'm just going to go through here and try to find as many cut options as possible. It's not a ton. Isaiah Hodgkins is an, or Hodgins is another guy close to a million savings. He's gone. Any guy like that, I'm going to see that, uh, you know, is basically, you know, even though he was a star development, which is surprising, 
But I'm going to cut guys like that. He's only 88 speed. He doesn't fit my scheme. He's saved me close to a million dollars. That's basically the rule. If you can get a guy, if a guy can save you close to a million dollars and he has no real value for you or no real value on the market either, like in a trade, you want to cut them right away. Now, there are some guys here. There are about four receivers here, none of which are really that great. I would say high is probably the best guy to build because of that 94 speed and he's so young. If I click on him, you can see he doesn't need a lot of XP. He only needs about 6,000 XP. Um, I could try to work him up too as far as getting his uh, rating up from a normal dev to other dev trades by doing stuff like uh, training things, which I'll show you guys in a minute. But he's probably one of my best options as far as a guy to build. Slayton too, also 94 speed. You really don't need much more than that. I got two guys that are 94 speed or higher. Um, you know, I might want a third receiver. I mean, McKenzie's okay at 92 speed. One at Robinson's okay. They're both five foot eight, though. They're both de decent slot options for the first year, but that's one of the things the Giants do. They do have good weapons in their passing game with six foot receiver at 94 speed and six one receiver at 94 speed. Then I get the tight end. Darren Wall is the same way. Six foot six, one of the faster tight ends in the game, and you know, a star tight end flat out so very good player here so i have at least three really good weapons i just have to get a quarterback and maybe even a, a, a better running back um, to make this worthwhile now once again like i said we have another guy here saving close to a million if i cut him which i will um, that's going to be close to three million already in just a few positions that i went through so it's like you can see how easily you can find um you know plenty of salary cap space if you go through this roster enough and just cut the fat cut the guys that aren't really doing anything i think you'll find the most opportunity opportunity in offensive and defensive linemen. If you're in a league where injuries are on, you might want to keep one or two decent backup linemen so that you can move them around if you get an injury. But for the most part, you can get rid of a lot of these guys. And I got a decision to make here because, um, you know, there's it's about the same savings. So I guess I'd rather keep Justin Pugh. But you can see how, you know, this is close to a million. And if I'm trying to get as much money as possible, I'm going to cut these guys. I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to get rid of guys like this, guys like Harlow, who has no guaranteed money, saves me, you know, close to a million. I'm rounding up when I say close to a million. But if I can get things like this, like this guy right here, what do I need that guy for? A backup center making a million dollars, 90K penalty. Go ahead and get rid of that guy. He's not really doing anything other than costing me a million dollars. So it's like I probably saved five, six million already for next seasons, for next offseason. Here's another one once again. Like I said, offensive linemen really seem to have the most opportunity um, for guys that are getting paid bloated salaries for no reason. As I probably already saved like $7 million doing this. Uh, but you might get to, if you're in a league that has a roster um, minimum, then, you know, at 46 is typically what it's set to. Uh, you got to be strategic with who you're cutting because you don't necessarily want to, uh, you know, reach that minimum. So let's go ahead and let's continue to release these guys. Any guy that also has a contract over a couple of years, which I'll have to back out. As you can see here, now we're getting to a bunch of, you know, the Giants really are struggling with a lot of talent issues. Uh, when it comes to some of these guys but let's back out and go to the actual team salaries and this is more about planning ahead because a guy like this if i cut him right now he really doesn't save me a lot of money because he already has um his penalty and his savings are about a hundred thousand apart which isn't really worthwhile it's actually ninety thousand apart which isn't worth much right now but next season it might make sense to cut him uh, when he's getting paid a little bit more because he still has three years left on his deal. So it's really up to me if I want to eat that right away or if I just want to wait till next season. But I would say letting him hang around the roster uh, would be the better move just because he has a, a multi-year deal. But this is all this all just comes down to the planning of what you want to do with your with your roster long term versus short term. As you can see, there's a lot of guys on this roster that really probably don't have good long term value, but they might be a decent value for at least one season. But I also want to back out to make sure that I don't get too close to my limit. Uh, because I mean it really doesn't matter because it'll stop me eventually but I just have to make more decisions like a guy like this here I'm you know long term I don't see a ton of value he's only 24 years old so it's not like um, I can't build him up um, he's got decent speed he's only a normal dev trait I mean a guy like this he probably has value for at least one season but I have to make a decision if his value is that much higher over a guy like Dane Belton who's 22 he's faster um, you know, because ultimately I'm looking at saving money. This guy here saves me a million. This guy here saves me about 200K. It's, it, you know what I mean? I feel like Dane Belton at his age might be just as good. But right now I'm going to leave both those guys on the roster because I do need to worry about at least this upcoming season. Here's a guy though, you know, he's saving about 700K, not really doing a lot. He's not very fast. He doesn't have any of the things that I want to fit my scheme. I could cut him. 
Um, it really depends on how, how how bare bones you want to go with a roster if you're really just mailing it in for a season. Uh, a guy like this, Nick McLeod, once again, million dollar savings, doesn't really fit my scheme, doesn't have a high you know speed or zone or anything like that. I'll cut this guy because he really doesn't look too high on my roster. I mean, I'm still gotta I'm still gonna pick up free agents too before the season starts, so there's still a lot of opportunity there. But at this point, like I said, I'm just looking for savings. Like Darnay Holmes, this guy here is probably one of the best options. He's 25, he's 5'10", so he's not very tall, and he's only got a 91 speed, doesn't have a great zone coverage, doesn't fit my scheme. So this guy here is going to save about $2.5 million, uh, which makes it much better just to get rid of him. Now, you could always cut these guys towards the end of the season too, which is something that I'll show you guys for the free agents that you sign. Um, so, you know, I'm just using this, like I said, this is a fake league that I created just to make this video. So I'm not suggesting that you always have to cut these guys at the beginning of the year if you think they can actually play for you a bit. Like I said, Pinnock might be the best option for a while. Um, so I don't want to cut them right away. So I don't feel like you have to cut a player that you might be able to use. But just know that, you know, a lot of these players just don't have value. Now, a guy like Isaiah Simmons definitely has value. I'm not going to cut him. 93 speed, uh, six foot four linebacker. He's he's a guy that I'm probably going to try to extend right away. Uh, but there's a lot of options. Like I said, an 84 speed linebacker, completely different story. Here's another guy right here. I mean, these guys are all just guys that I can just just get rid of. You know what I mean, they're saving me close to a million, and they have no real value. Now, you will from time to time have some tough decisions to make, like this guy here, uh, Jihad Ward. Um, you know, he just, I just don't know what to make of this guy on my roster. He's a 69 speed outside linebacker. Under no circumstances do I want this guy to play. It's a half a million penalty, but you also get a million savings. So based on the fact that his speed is so bad, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to get rid of him. And it's, it's just not as big of a reward as somebody, you know, like I said, my rule of thumb would probably be if he saves you a million, that's, that's what you want to go for. But that guy's speed was so bad, I had to get rid of him. So that's something that um, I definitely, uh, you know, would break that rule for. Um, although there's not a ton left on this roster to get rid of. Like I said, I can make decisions on guys like this. 63 speed. Um, he's, once again, he's saving me about a half a mil. Is that correct? Yeah. But no, it's close to 700,000. So stuff like that I want to do. And it, see, it looks like I hit my cap. So I already cut everybody. That's fine because I'm going to back out. I'm going to sign some guys anyway. Uh, some guys that are really just stopgap answers. Obviously, when you're doing this in an online CFM, you're not going to have your pick of the litter necessarily, but you can see how there's just a ton of uh, free agent talent out there because this is a roster that's based off of the Madden 25 or based off of the current um, NFL roster. So if you have this situation where you've got some guys out there, you can go ahead and try to you know plug some gaps. You can do that. And then obviously, if you find a good enough player, like, I mean, Dobbins is a guy to me. He was a star dev you know, I, I would be happy with him as my starting running back. He's only 24 years old. I don't need to wait for the draft. I could sign this guy. He's got a star development. He's still really young. You can see you only need 6,000 XP to get to the next level. This guy right here could easily be my starting running back, and he probably will be. So I could sign him right away. You don't have to worry about your cap when you're signing these guys because if you release these guys before the season's over, you get all that money back in rollover cap. So just keep that in mind. It's something that you can do in Madden. I'll, I'll remind you guys later in the video. But there's definitely a lot of talent to be had on the market for uh, one year. You know, And guys that you have the ability to try to keep too. Once you have them on your roster, you can resign them once the season starts. Now, like I said, I'm trying to get young guys in an online CFM. Definitely, I'm going to want fast guys, fast young guys. So I would try to get players like this. Obviously, like I said, you're going to be competing a lot of times for these players. But anything you can get to improve your roster for a season. I mean, I would take Odell Beckham Jr., if I'm being honest. He's fine. You know what I mean? As a, as a high-rated player, he could be uh, something that I could add uh, for one year. Although, realistically... This is something that I'm not. I'm gonna to want to try to build for the long term anyway. So that's not really a huge help. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's plenty of talent out here uh, to be had. Uh, one thing that I typically do that I don't think a lot of people do uh, that's really uh, helpful is when it comes to filling roster positions like fullbacks and uh, tight ends, you don't always just want, I mean, Darren Wall is a really good receiver. I have my receiving threat, but you also want to put a little bit of time into guys that are really good run blockers, although I'm not even in the right spot. You want guys that have high run block. Max Williams is a guy that I always seem to find on the market that nobody needs, seems to know about that has one of the highest run blocks in the entire game, not just on the free agency market, in the entire game. So he's a guy, I usually could pick up a guy like him or whoever has the highest run block grade because 
because you can also turn these guys into your fullback. If you got a guy with a high lead block grade, same thing. So I would pick up guys like this. These top two guys, I'd pick them up and make one a blocking tight end and make one a fullback. That's something that a lot of people overlook and they don't really seem to value. When it comes to linemen, if you have issues with linemen, and let's pretend that there aren't obvious, uh, you know, that David Bakhtiari isn't obviously the best lineman on here. But let's say that the market's a little bit slimmer and let's go down the list here a little bit. Let's say that, you know, after the free agency market gets wiped out and there's really only like, you know, mid 70 guys like this. If you still know what type of system you run, if you run a system where you're gonna be passing, go straight to the pass block grade and separate it by pass block. You know what I mean? Like I said, obviously David Bakhtiar is gonna be really good and Charles Leno, there's higher rated guys here that I'm gonna ignore and act like they're not there. But you got guys like, um, you know, this guy here, Juwan James, only 73 overall. There's a very good chance that he sits on the market and nobody picks him up. He has an 80 uh, pass block and an 82 pass block power. Anything over 80, if that's better than what I have, I'll take that. You know what I mean? This is a guy, very good one year um, stopgap solution. If I'm more of a run player, uh, I'm going to focus more on their run block grade. It's really that simple. You're not going to get a ton of great run block grades when it comes to line to the tackles, but when you go to guards and centers and stuff like that, this is going to be, you know, a lot of people like to run inside. Mostly, when you're building an offensive line, I would say pass blocking on the edge is the most important, and run blocking on the inside is the most important because if you're running from, like my personal scheme, like I'm telling you guys, from a shotgun a lot where I like to pass a lot, I'm going to want to run a lot of inside zones. So in that scenario, if, you know, I'm not too concerned about guards having great pass blocking as I am concerned with them having better run blocking. So for my guards, I'm going to try to find guys like this that have high run block grades. And I think what Lyle Collins is only like a 79 overall. Like I said, there's a chance you could pick up guys like that on the market, um, you know, later in the season. But if you're looking for to improve a specific area of your line, you can't expect to get all stars or pro bowlers up and down the line from doing this, but you can definitely get a guy like AJ McCain, or I'm sorry, AJ Can, I'm not even sure how to say his name, but this guy here is only a 74 overall, so there's a chance that he's just sitting out on the market at any point in time throughout the season. And you can pick him up and improve your run block grade because he has the third highest on the market. If it's better than what I have, it's an improvement. And like I said, you don't have to worry about your long-term salary cap because I'm gonna cut all these players that I'm signing now. I'm gonna cut them before uh, the next season starts or before this season's over rather so I can get that rollover cap, which is probably the most important thing. So if I have the opportunity or if I want the opportunity, I can definitely improve by picking up guys but I want to pick up guys, even now, even with this free agency blitz that typically happens at the start of seasons, you typically want to pick up these guys that you can have long-term uh, aspirations for. Like this guy here, perfect. He's 26. I don't know how great he is, but, you know, 82, whatever. I didn't really look into it too much. But at that age, I could pick him up and, and have him for the long haul. Guys like Leo Collins. I could pick this guy up, have him for the long haul. And like I said, it's up to me if I want to resign them or not. Well, if I just want to cut them after, after before the year ends and get all that money back. So I went ahead and I signed a few players and I set my roster to 53 because that's typically uh, what leagues want you to be at. That's typical for the, you know, once the once the uh, the, the deadline passes here, um, that's going to be the final cut. I'll have an opportunity again, too, once we get to the final week of the preseason to go through the free agents that got cut by the computer teams or other teams and try to find some gems as well. But I'll get into that in a minute. Before the league actually starts, though, you're going to want to make sure you take training camp very seriously. Now, I already did a full video on this particular topic this year i mean knocking out a gold in each and every one of these gives your player that you use during this an opportunity to get a dev trait increase so express that's especially important to guys like danny jones who is going to be even harder to build since he's only a normal dev trait if i could get his dev trait up if i could do if i could get a gold in this and i get lucky enough that it awards me a star dev trait that makes it one step closer that i might actually keep danny jones because he's still young like i said he's not he's not far gone it's the fact that i'm locked into the contract that makes me wonder if i'm going to try to draft a quarterback which is probably going to be my priority or i want to see how far i get with danny jones as far as progressing him before uh the season's done to the point where i have to decide that maybe he's worth keeping because like i said that contract's always going to be there whether you build a, a different quarterback or whether you don't whether you try to stick with danny jones you're stuck with that contract so is it better to just have him as a dead weight of the amount of money that he's getting paid every year 
or is it better to try to build him? So like I said, I'm going to give it my honest effort to try to build Danny Jones for a year and then make that assessment at the end of the year. And that starts with doing things like target passing and trying to unlock better dev traits. If I can get his dev trade up throughout the year, either through doing these uh, practice, you know, these um, target passing drills or through a dev, uh, you know, the, the, the dev trait games where you can up, you know, improve the dev trait, I'm going to try my best to make him into a better dev trait so he's actually worth keeping. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you do every single one of these until you get gold, because at the very least you'll get a skill point, you get some good XP, which could earn you another skill point based on the fact that you could pass the threshold. But most importantly, you can unlock dev trade upgrades which will be the most important thing when it comes to trying to improve things like, you know, Danny Dimes, which is going to be probably the biggest challenge when it comes to this team. So then after uh, the final week of preseason, when all the cut rosters are down to 53, you're going to want to go through the free agency market one more time looking for new players that got cut. This is a more realistic look of what the free agency market will look like. But you can see there's still some value here for at least one year. I mean, if you run, um, you know, man-to-man, -man, William Jackson, the third, is a 92-speed cornerback. Um, you know, he still has, I don't know where his uh, zone coverage is, because like I said, I run zone coverage. But at 92-speed, I'm not too worried about it, because that's probably the most important thing. Six foot 92 speed, uh, 74 zone. It really depends on if this guy's an upgrade or not over what you have. But my whole point is just go through and just try to look for steals. I typically stick to speed and stuff like that because if there's like Naheem Hines is actually pretty good. He's a he's a good return man. I could pick him up. He's a receiving back. Uh, he's got good hands. Stuff like that. If I can find any more fast you know receivers on the market, I might pick that up. Like I said blocking tight ends. A lot of times, I mean, Mercedes Lewis is pretty much known as a blocking tight end. But there's always I'm always on the lookout for for really good blocking tight ends. You can see Mercedes Lewis has a 77. That might be one of the highest in the game once again. As I guess I forgot to pick up Max Williams, uh, but I'm at the Max roster, so if I wanted to, I could back out and pick him up. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's there's always opportunity on the market if your team is in need. It's really hard to say, um, you know, based off what team you have. But there's always opportunities out here, and I would say, you know, any position putting more speed on the field is always better. So a lot of times I'll always look at, um, you know, speed and just try to find uh, some fast players I can fill in some holes with. Uh, because the faster a player gets somewhere, the, the more of an impact he's going to have. So at the end of the day, if I want a good user, I could always pick up Kamur Gruzer Hill, um, who's an 89 speed, make him a user. You know what I mean? Or I could put him coming off the edge. A lot of blitzes, an 89 speed guy coming off the edge. If he gets in free, is a sack every single time. It doesn't matter what his rating is. Um, but, you know, this is uh, this is pretty much how I do it. And I got like Kalen Barnes. This is a young guy. He's 24 years old. If I go by speed rating alone, him, Isaiah Bolden, who's six foot two. I mean, he doesn't have good agility, which is probably the downside of him. But, you know, these three cornerbacks alone have value. This, the, the, All of them, really. I mean, they're all young. They're all going to be easy to work up. I'll pick up a guy like Kalen Barnes because his speed is elite. And, you know, given the team that I have, I can work him up. I'm gonna, He's a guy that I'm going to work up over time. But I'm not going to put too much, uh, you know, I'm not going to pick up too many guys like that because you can't build them all. But if you're savvy and if you pick up guys like this who are really young, like I said, Isaiah Bolton, he's six foot two. I'm going to take that guy. I mean, I don't know what his dev trade is or nothing like that. But these are all guys that I could potentially build. And if not, I just cut them at, before the year is over and I get all that money back anyway in rollover cap towards next year's salary cap. So now that my so now that my roster is locked in, the next thing that I'm going to want to focus on the most is going to be my coaching staff. I'm going to go ahead and go to my managed staff, managed franchise staff here, and I want to make sure that I have the right coaches in place first. Um, I don't really know much about Dable's talent tree, um, but it's something you can fire you know any coach really. The only thing I really care about when it comes to the head coach talent tree is the after school tutoring. That's probably the most important. After that, I'm more concerned with my coordinators, my offensive coordinator, my defensive coordinator. Now, they already have a couple of slots filled out, but that's not anything I'm too worried about because I'm probably gonna fire them both anyway. But this particular spot here, the after school tutoring, is one of the most important things when it comes to building a team. And it's the first thing that you should try to do when it comes to filling out a coaching tree. So I'm gonna go to my back, I'm gonna show you why this is important if you don't know. When you go 
through um, your weekly uh, strategy sessions every week, if I can get back to that a little bit faster. Uh, if I go to my weekly strategy and I go, I'm just going to go ahead, I'm going to go all the way through to the end because, like I said, I'm not really worried about all this right now. You can see you have three slots for young players to try to build, and then you also have extra focus player slots that you get from unlocking after-school tutoring. If you're rebuilding a team, you want to get this done as quick as possible. You want to unlock these six slots as quick as possible for the long-term effect because you're doubling the effectiveness of focusing on young players by doing this. Every league I'm in is the first thing I unlock before I worry about the other things. But let's go and let's back out and go back to that coaching because we still have to find some new coaches because I don't really think my – I'm not sure if my coordinators are really going to fit the bill. So let's go and let's go back to that. Now, after I unlock after-school tutoring, the next thing I'm going to focus on is upgrading the speed and skill of my players on offense and defense. And I don't really find like either one of these coordinators are really too great for that. Uh, as far as my offensive coordinator, he does have uh, overclocked, which is one of my favorite when it comes to increasing the speed of running backs. Um, I don't think there's one that exists for receivers or else that would just be too broken. But the defensive side has a lot of options as well. Now, I didn't actually see what this particular player, it looks like speed for middle linebackers. That's not bad for users, but there are ones that increase speed for outside linebackers, which is just as effective because you can basically just use an outside linebacker. Uh, there's ones that increase speed for cornerbacks that I find a little bit more important. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead. I'm just going to I'm just going to get rid of these. I'm going to fire both these guys and find the coordinators that um, have the most uh, speed upgrades that I, in the positions that I'm looking for. Now, it's usually the same coaches, if I remember correctly. Uh, but let's go ahead and let's just view the talent. Sheet. Like I said, we're just going to go through. We're going to look for um, guys that have uh, speed boosts for cornerbacks, outside linebackers, defensive linemen, stuff like that, and then I can make that decision. Uh, I guess I'm in the offensive coordinators right now as we have, um, you know, overclock once again. I do like that one. I do like that. There is one, though, since I like to pass a little bit more, where uh, there's, a, there's typically a coordinator that is a focus on uh, throw power, which is going to be important for a quarterback like I have. As you can see right here, boost throw power for quarterback by one. That's really up to me if I want to go that route or if I want to go the speed of the running back. This is what I mean by you really have to know what type of system you run. For me personally, um, I like to pass a lot. I think it depends on, you know, this is the other thing too. Am I going to stick with Daniel Jones or not? If I'm going to draft a quarterback, then it really doesn't matter if I'm going to boost uh, the quarterback's throw power because he might not be my long-term solution. So for me, it's probably more important to have a, a fast, um, you know, faster running backs or just speed improvements in, in areas like that. But I'll go through all the talent trees here just to see which one of these guys best fits my scheme or gives me the most options. Now, this is an interesting coaching tree here if I'm deciding to stay with Daniel Jones. You have uh, boost short accuracy, boost medium accuracy, and boost deep accuracy. So if I unlock all three of those, and they're really not too far down the line, I mean, it would cost me uh, 60 per, so it costs me about 180, but this could significantly help me improve my quarterback's accuracy, which is probably gonna be the biggest issue. And then I also have throw power for quarterbacks by one all the way at the bottom. So if I really am focused on fixing my quarterback situation, and it might be the best way to go based off the fact that, like I said, I'm kind of stuck with Daniel Jones, this here might be the best one uh, based off the fact that I do have those. You do have boost acceleration for halfbacks too, which is, um, you know, it's decent. Obviously, I'd rather the speed. But I think for now, for this first season, since I really think it's probably best for me to try to improve um, Danny Dimes and try to try to live with him because I don't want to be eating that contract every single year. There's no way out from that contract. I think it might be best to go with this particular player on offense. And, uh, you know, my defense will be a, com a completely different story. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to hire Ruben Reynolds. And then for my defensive coordinator, I found a good coordinator that has boost speed for outside linebacker by one and also boost speed for cornerbacks. Now, like I said, I want speed everywhere on the field, so it really doesn't matter. But cornerbacks are probably the most important. You want fast cornerbacks so they don't get burned deep. I, th I like to blitz my cornerbacks a lot. That's pretty much a defensive scheme that I'm running. So that's another scenario where I'm going to want a fast cornerback coming off that edge. So this is probably my favorite defensive coordinator here. And then, like I said, I could use her an outside linebacker or I can run, you know, if I run blitzes with outside linebackers, all that stuff's going to be helpful. Speed boosts are probably the most important thing. Um, as you can see, you know, any, any, any defensive position that has more than one speed boost position is probably going to be the best way to go. So now that we have our coordinators picked out, we have a game plan. We know what we want to target in these tiers to improve. 
we have to uh, pick which one of these branches we want to go down. And the main difference is offense versus defense. This is the next thing you want to unlock. I said the first thing you want to unlock is after school tutoring because you want those extra, uh, extra slots. But at the same time, you have to pick one of these tiers to get there. And this is probably one of the most important too. Because what these do is if you unlock it once or you unlock it twice, is it reduces the cost of coordinator talents, whether on offense or defense, by 10 or 20%. So right now, I have to pay, you know, if I want to improve my, my quarterback's accuracy, I got to pay 20. But if I decide to buy this twice first, I will be able to get a discount and have to pay less. So let's go and let's do that. Because to me, the most important thing to fix right now is Danny Dimes. Um, but I think for the long term, I definitely want to fix my defense because, like I said, I, I, I located two different things that I want to fix when it comes to uh, my defense. I want to improve my speed of my linebackers and my cornerbacks. And I find just in general, you get more out of the defensive tree than you do the offensive tree. Now, when you get points to upgrade players, it's very important to know that there are certain uh, things that will um, upgrade things that are required, like Danny Jones here. I told you already, he has a pretty weak throw power, A7. That's probably the first thing that I want to work on. So if I choose things like strong arm, this has a chance of upgrading his throw power. This is, I think, the only thing that does. So if I pick that, I'm going to pick it twice. As you can see, it's it's, it's increasing my accuracies too, which is important. Uh, but really, like I said, what I'm going for here is his 87 throw power. If I get his 87 throw power up to 88 uh, or a throw power increase, that's going to be the biggest thing. Um, as I just increase my accuracies, but that's fine for now. I didn't get what I wanted yet. But I'm going to keep doing that every single time. I'm going to keep going for that throw power, throw power, throw power. And eventually I'll get this up to an 88, 89, 90. And that's really going to be beneficial to me. And then I also have my coaching tree that I can still upgrade his throw power as well. So like I said, this guy here, he's the biggest issue that I got to fix. And I'm focusing a lot of energy on that. Now, when it comes to things like receivers, uh, tight ends, running backs, they all have things that can increase their uh, their their. Um, their deep speed, and I'm pretty sure it's deep threat. So let's go and let's pick that. I don't know if I'm gonna get any speed boost points uh, this early on, but um, but that's typically what I wanna go with, because once again, it also matches my scheme. My scheme is I like to throw the ball deep. So going for deep threat every single time on my receivers and tight ends is gonna be important. When it comes to things like uh, defense, I'm pretty sure the only thing that increases uh, speed, I've seen increases in speed through zone, so I'm gonna try that again, because once again, that's my scheme, and it's also uh, a way of increasing something very important, which is speed. So I'm gonna pick that a lot. When it comes to defensive linemen, I've seen speed points get uh, you know implemented through speed rusher. So a lot of times I'll pick speed rusher. I mean, these guys obviously aren't guys I'm planning on building, but if you have defensive linemen, outside linebackers, uh, I know defensive tackle in my other CFM, I pick speed rusher on, um, Jalen Carter and got a plus one. Same thing with Nolan Smith, speed rusher, and got a plus one. So these are the ways that you can, these are the uh, the, the uh, things you should focus on if you're trying to increase speed, which is always important in Madden. Zone covers, like I said, I've gotten speed increases on zone coverage for some reason in cornerbacks, which doesn't make a ton of sense uh, because you would think man coverage would be just the same. But these are the things that I've chosen in other CFMs and I've gotten speed points rewarded when it comes to running backs which isn't here uh, you have to pick elusive back but i don't have a running back to show you guys that so now you'll eventually unlock uh players ready to negotiate so let's go and let's go into that um this is another scenario where you really want to um just try to focus on um you know players that you want to build long term for and it has to be appropriate value like a guy like david bakhtiari i mean i, I don't mind keeping him um considering he's a superstar, he's not too old, you know what I mean? But it's like, you really have to look at it like, is the value there. Like a guy like Isaiah Simmons, I'm gonna pay whatever he wants because he's young and he's just a stud in Madden. He's six foot four, 93 speed, user middle linebacker. I'm gonna keep that guy. Even if I just blitz him off the edge, he's a good player. Uh, Dobbins is a good player. Like I said, I could keep him as a starting running back if I really want to. Um, there's a lot of options here, but you just really wanna sift through this and be like, all right, who do I see that's worth the value and is good for a long-term solution compared to what I might be able to get down the line? So, I mean, guys like, you know, I got Anthony Schwartz, who's a 96 speed. Obviously, I don't want to let him go. You know I mean, there's a lot of really good options here. And I only, it says I only have 44 million in cap, but you got to remember that once I release all of the uh, the one-year signings that I that I picked up at the beginning of the year, it's going to roll over and I'm going to have more cap down the line. So I wouldn't necessarily look at that number like it's a concrete number. 
but there's definitely uh, opportunity here. I would say out of all these players, the only ones that I would want to resign is Dobbins, Isaiah Simmons, Bakhtiari, um, Gilmore at that, at that age, I really don't know if I want to keep him, but he is still a superstar, so that's an option. Uh, I don't want Odell Beckham for the long term. Connor Williams, maybe. Um, you know, Leo Collins, maybe. There's a couple of good options here. That's probably it. Uh, I'll try to resign all of them. But another tip is you're going to want to make sure that you change your roster to make these guys starters to, to increase their re-sign interest. You can see Jacob Dobbins and Isaiah Simmons. They don't want no parts of being here because they're not playing. So I'm going to go to my depth chart. And this is something I probably would have did if I was actually playing these games rather than just simming through. But if I go to my depth chart here and put them in the starting position and then wait a week, they will want to resign. You know what I mean? Like right here, I'm going to, it says they don't want to resign right now. Like I said, I'm not really big. Like Singletary is just not that fast. So I'd rather have Dobbins who has a 91 speed or even Breda, even though Breda, like I said, I'm not really, you know, I, I like Dobbins. So I would def definitely take him. But if I put the right guys in the starting positions, they're going to want to resign next, next year, which is really the point. So I'll put Simmons, like technically, I don't know if he's not considered a starter or not. I'm not really sure. Uh, but Bobby O'Kerke is already locked up. So since I want to lock him up too, I'll go ahead and put him in a starting spot. I'm going to back out and sim a week. And now that I sim the week and I put these guys in a starting spot, you'll notice that they're more likely interested in resigning. J.K. Dobbins is definitely more interested in resigning. Um, I'm not sure why Isaiah Simmons is not as interested. Um, I'm pretty sure I put him in the starting spot. Maybe I got to put him in a sub package placement too. But let's just use this guy as an example. Now, when they're young like this, increase the years you know i mean just basically give them because you can see the actual amount of remaining salaries going down as i increase so if i want to lock this guy up till he's 30 i can do that i usually might give like a little bit more just round it up a little bit and i'll probably take the offer uh, which is typical you know i mean they want years they want long-term years especially if they want to resign and i only really in, in, in improved it just a little bit so that's something that i could do uh with guys like this though I'm going to want to try to bring this back because they usually ask for way more than they'll actually accept. He's got a high re-sign interest. So I'm going to go ahead and drop that down a bit. And I think that he's still going to take it. But if he's not, I'll have another chance. Uh, it says, I'm interested in returning as long as, you can, as long as you can work on increasing the pay. So I know next time he's going to want a little more money. But that's okay because I don't want to necessarily just give what they want right out the gate. Um, here's a weird one because he only wants a uh, one-year deal. Um, I'll go ahead and I'll try to increase that because, like I said, it's, it's definitely valued to have that superstar ability there. Uh, I'll just increase it a year and just drop the offer just a little bit and hopefully they'll take it. Um, yeah, there we go. So we got that done. They like said, I'll try to knock as many of these out because it's really not too difficult to, to negotiate with players like this. But you can see I'm already kind of running out of money. And a large part of that is because I have a lot tied up into an offer uh, with Bakhti Hari. So I'm going to have to wait a little bit till I get that figured out before I can move on to some of these other players. Like I said, guys like Connor Williams, guys like Leo Collins, you can find guys like that. So I'm not as concerned, but I definitely want to prioritize. And Isaiah Simmons and Bakhti Hari are definitely uh, two guys that I prioritize higher. If I still have money left, I can still go pick up some of these guys. This one here, though, I, I kind of overlooked that. I don't know why he wants so much money. You know what I mean, but we're going to go ahead. We're going to try to lock him in right now. Because I could always uh, come back around and, you know, cancel out Bakhtiari. Like I said, this is obviously have a 96 speed guy like this is, is important. So let's go ahead and let's bump that up just a little bit because we want to lock that in. It's unacceptable. So, yeah, so I don't even, I don't even, he, he definitely sounds upset. I don't know how poorly I botched that. But that's something I'll have to fix down the line. Like I said, you have multiple opportunities to try to figure this stuff out. Now, we got a breakout linebacker dev trait opportunity here. Uh, with Brian Burns, these are definitely going to want to try to knock out. Like I said, if you're building a team, getting, um, and this is here, it's hold it to 150 total yards or less, or get three plus interceptions, force fumbles, and sacks. Like I said, if I were actually going to play this game, I would just send Brian Burns after the quarterback every single play. I would try to find my best blitz that I could put him in a position where he's going to get a free run, and I'm going to try to unlock this. Because that's, you know, one of the most important things is the, to long-term success is increasing dev traits. So I would definitely go hardcore to try to get that guy that position. Now, when it comes to negotiating too, um, it's to a point where uh, I could definitely, um, you know, I definitely want to lock up Bakhtihari for the rest of this, uh, you know, these two years. But I'll go ahead and just increase that offer just a little bit. And it looks like we nailed it. So we really only have left Isaiah Simmons and um i definitely want to try to keep schwartz i'm going to try to figure out why he's unhappy about his last offer we'll just increase the amount here as we're getting kind of close to the amount of money 
Um, yeah, so we so we locked him up. They said we only got about six mil left, and we have to lock up Isaiah Simmons. I haven't even taken an attempt at Isaiah Simmons yet, because he's basically um, not interested just yet. And I'm gonna try to finagle his um, his his job as a, maybe if I put him as like a sub package middle linebacker. I gotta take a look at what he's not happy about. Okay, so I went ahead and I changed Isaiah Simmons to a starter to try to get him more interested in resigning. And he still wasn't interested, so I went to this his player card, and I went to his um, his motivation slash tags, and I saw that his scheme fit was matching. So I basically changed my scheme to Tampa two to get his um, to get his motivation back up to the point where he wants to resign. If I look at how to do that, you have to go to manage staff, team schemes, and then you have to go down. I had to change it from I think it was a three four odd to a Tampa two. So now he's interested in resigning. So basically I can just finagle that just to get him to want to resign and I can change it right back if I want to, but it's not even really that important. So if I really just want to lock him in, I can change that just to get him interested. And I don't even have to wait a week because he's now interested. Uh, I think this is the salary that he asked for. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to take the, uh, I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to lock him in and basically, yeah, there we go. So we got him locked in for a couple years. Although realistically, if I was doing this seriously, I would have wanted to lock him in for like five or six years because of his age but that's fine i just wanted to show you guys that there is tricks to get players interested based off of things like um, whether or not they're a starter whether or not they're in the right scheme those are the probably most important things like weather and stuff like that really you can't change being you know being the giants but um you know stuff like that is something that you can't have a lot of uh, a lot of effect on and I can just change this based off of, I mean, I don't really care. I run my scheme, I want to run my scheme. But I can change this based off of who I want to actually um, to stay. You know what I mean, like now that I got that all figured out, you know, I can just bring it right back. But this here, this really only matters if you're trying to resign somebody. I don't think it has really anything to do with anything else. I run my scheme however I want to run my scheme. Now, when you get to week eight, you got to do something called scouting national focus. Um, I, I'm not going to go over scouting and drafting because I made an entire video dedicated to that. So if you guys want to see more, I will have links in the description as well as on screen at the end of the video. And it'll probably be popping up in the top right corner right now. But ultimately, this is something you just want to, to me personally, I just set the focus to whatever position I think I need the most. At this point, you got to make a decision on things like Danny Jones. If I want to, you know, I mean, one of the strengths is receiver, right tackle, cornerback. I don't know if I really need any of those things, um, you know, but this is something that's going to be different for every team. Like I said, I'll keep it at quarterback based off the fact that I just don't, you know, I, I got to get that position fixed. If you don't have a good quarterback, you're really not going to go very far. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to set national focus to that. So it took a while. I mean, I simmed through most of the season, but it took a while. I guess I had to do both of these trees, which I really didn't remember, uh, which is fine because, like I said, I still want to make sure that I unlock uh, both of these on both sides before I buy anything on offense or defense because it's going to bring it to a discount. But ultimately, I finally got down to after school tutoring. I unlocked at least one. Hopefully, by the end of the season, I'll have all this unlocked. But like I said, I'm not really winning games. I'm just simming through these games. Um, I would definitely be doing better if I was actually playing them and setting my weekly goals, which is something I'm not really doing. Um, but I'll go ahead and I'll show you guys. If you do, if you are doing this, if you are doing this properly, you see here I, I did unlock at least one more tier, which, like I said, is really important because, you know, and I would be doing those every week too, obviously, which would help. Uh, and I actually think, speaking of which, it only happened once, but I'm pretty sure that I unlocked um, – a star development for a player doing these every week, which only happened one time. I might be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure I unlocked star development for Keely Ringo in the, with the Eagles uh, doing one of these one time. I may be wrong. Uh, if he's a normal development in regular game mode, um, then I'm right, because like I said, I didn't unlock that in a regular thing. But now one thing you're going to want to save a space for on your roster is mentors. If you guys don't know, signing mentor players or players that have the word mentor next to their player tags, I'm going to find they're typically older players, like uh, 30, like late 30 players, like this guy here, Brian Hoyer. He's not a guy that's expected to play at all. He's just there as a mentor. If you sign guys like this, they will improve the amount of XP that your quarterbacks or whatever position you're focusing on will get for that position when you do your training. So if I'm really trying to fix a guy like Daniel Jones or if I'm really trying to work up my young receivers, which is going to be important, I got to find players that have that mentor tag uh, next to their name. So any of these guys, Julio Jones would be a great player to add at the beginning of the season so that every time, and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about if you're not aware, whenever you do your weekly strategy, 
which is something that you're gonna find right here. I'll go ahead and I'll just skip all the way to the end. When you get to team profile, you get your start training. Anytime you hit, um, yeah, I'm not worried about that. Anytime you do the sim training here, you're gonna see that the players that have mentors will get a bonus. So they'll get a little bit more. So you wanna have as many mentor players as you can as I'm gonna to try to find the quarterbacks. I'm not really even sure where they're at. Um, I only see defensive players here. I guess maybe I go to the other side. So yeah, if I look at the quarterbacks here, like Daniel Jones, his XP is 200, and that's because he has a mentor in Brian Hoyer. And now that we sim to essentially the end of the season, like I said, the last thing I'm gonna do before the season's over is I wanna to go to my roster, and I wanna do roster cuts one more time. I wanna cut every player that I'm not going to be carrying into the future. So a guy like Brian Hoyer, who I only sign, especially mentors. Any mentors you sign, just to, just to boost the XP of your players, you want to get rid of them. Now, I did pick up J.K. Dobbins as a, a stopgap player, but obviously I don't want to cut him because I re-signed him to a long-term deal. So you got to be careful of that. But this is your last opportunity to get rid of players that you really only signed for the season so you can get that money back and roll over cap. Positions like uh, you know Odell Beckham, I signed him for five mil. I had no real uh, you know need to re-sign him. And to be honest with you, since I'm trying to build this team long term anyway, it would have made more sense to just start Darius Slayton and Jalen Hyatt and Anthony Schwartz and just work those guys up. But I didn't actually play these games. I just kind of you know went through them as quick as possible because that's really what the goal was. I was just trying to get to that point um, where I was trying to you know basically show you guys a good method to, to build a team. Now I could go to the, I could just go to penalty here and this is probably the best way to just cut guys so I can get that money back. You know what I mean? Cause these are all guys that don't have any, um, if I separate it by, by penalty, I can see they're all zero penalty. So I could go through here and just get rid of these guys so I can get all this money back. So whoever this guy is, doesn't really matter. He, I'm gonna get that back. I didn't actually look though, make sure this guy isn't like a really fast, Linebackers. I mean, he's only 79 speed. I don't even know how this guy's still in my roster. So, like I said, I'm just going to cut these guys so I can get that rollover cap. Because if I look at my team salary right now, as this, as this game takes a, a nice, you know, second to load here. But if I look at my team salaries, it'll tell me that I have uh, 60 million cap space, um, which I'm pretty sure will go down as I release these guys. And I can actually do this from the team salary section, but I'm so, so used to doing it from the other other screen. But let's go let's go back to rosters. Like I said, if I if I was building this team normally, I would normally remember who all the players were that I only really signed to get rid of. But that's the most important thing. So like Isaiah Bolden, I actually signed him with the idea of potentially, you know, keeping him. Connor Williams, I couldn't re-sign him. I will have another opportunity uh, before the next season starts. Leo Collins, so I could keep them on to try to resign them at the next free agency stage or the next offseason stage. But that's really up to me if I want to try to do that. Jonathan Abram, I'm not going to resign him. So I want that rollover cap. I'll get rid of him. Like I said, we're just going to take this as the last opportunity. Bolden, I'm not going to resign him. So I might as well just let him go. I, he's a guy, like I said, in real, in real life, I might have tried to use one of my focus slots to improve him because six foot two with that speed is pretty rare. Um, but let's just go ahead and let's get rid of him right now. So the first season's done. I really didn't get a ton of coaching points because I was simming the games and the Giants were just losing a lot. But if I would have spent more time, like accurately, uh, you know, setting my um, my weekly goals and stuff like that, it would have been much better. But this is the whole point I really wanted to show is that these are the things you want to unlock the most first, and that is you want to get your discounts on offense and defense done so that the talent trees just cost less. Because when I get to the point where I really want to start building up my accuracies on my quarterback it's gonna go it's gone down it's 16 i think it was 24 so it's like this is just a huge savings over time you know i mean that's what you're looking at you're looking at over the course of three four seasons it's going to be easy to unlock all these things now because i have that um you know i just have that discount where i think this was like 40 before now it's only like 32 maybe it was 36 i really don't remember but i'm just saying it's cheaper so over the course of several seasons or over more time you're going to have the easier ability to unlock all these things which is really going to be important because these are really important especially when it comes to like speed on defense like one of the first things i do once i fix my quarterback situation is going to be uh fixing my defensive situation i'm gonna i'm gonna put more speed on my cornerbacks i'm gonna put more speed on my outside linebackers all this stuff's gonna cost a lot so you really want to unlock these two 
and this one here first because these are going to be the um the things are going to pay dividends over time this is going to be the things that uh save you uh and, and help you build a team the most over time and i got that all within a season i think if i was actually playing these games i probably would have got it all done probably within um you know midway through the season because i would have put more focus and attention into it rather than just skipping right through uh, but this one here, I accidentally did twice. I didn't mean to do that. So these you only have to do one time just to get through them and then move on to the to, to get down to here. But you have to unlock both of these tiers to get to that. So just keep that in mind. And then we get to the off season. Like I said, you get one more opportunity to negotiate, but you'll see that you have more available money now. As you can see, the, the cap rollover that I created by cutting all those players gives me a second opportunity to try to re-sign these linemen if that's what I want to do. You can see it says last chance. I'm not really wild about the amount of money that Connor Williams wants. I feel like I could probably get an 82 overall center for maybe less, maybe around that. I still like Lael Collins though, uh, but since that's the purpose of this video, I'm just going to try to lock these guys up. So this is what he's asking for. I'm going to go ahead and make it a two-year deal. Hopefully I'll have enough money to sign both these guys. As you can see, we knocked that guy out. Go ahead and I'll give this guy one more shot too. Um, as you can see, it's not quite giving me enough money, but like I said, I, I just feel like, you know, you, you're not going to be able to re-sign everybody. I could try to cut somebody real quick. Let's see if I could do that real quick. As I didn't even realize that, um, you know, there's still opportunity to try to make up that money. So let's go ahead and let's manage our staff one, one more time. And you can see the computer signed a bunch of guys that I can just release and try to make up that difference. So we got a bunch of running backs back. For some reason, Eric Gray's back. I could have swore I cut this guy. I don't know how they re-signed him. <laughs> I don't know what the fascination is. But you can see there's a bunch of, like, random dudes on the roster that you can slowly but surely save money and then try to re-sign that last player. So don't think that you just don't have an opportunity. As you can see, like, who is this guy? He's making a million dollars. I can just get rid of him and try to make enough money back, which is something I'm going to want to do before free agency anyway. I'm going to want to get rid of all these guys once again, repeat the process, because that's really what this is. You're really repeating the steps that I showed you in this video over and over, year after year. You can see now I have more money. I, I could continue to, to get rid of people, but you can see that, you know, we have enough money now. I'm going to increase my offer just to guarantee that we get them. If I can do that, like I said, I can continue to cut guys if I really want to sign this guy, but I'm pretty sure I'm giving him enough. And you can see we re-signed all the players that we wanted. Uh, we still have the ability to make more space for free agency because, like I said, I can just go back through and cut a bunch of these players that the computer signed before free agency starts. And that's how you can continue to do this process. Now, I know the Giants didn't end up with a very good record, but obviously doing things like this pay dividends over time. Doing things like... Um, you know, drafting well, uh, maybe drafting a quarterback, which might be my next move, and then building him through uh, all the processes that I showed you is probably going to be my next step. But it's really just redoing the process. And like I said, I'm not going to show drafting because I already did a full video on that. So I'm going to end the video here. Now, I'm not going to continue further into season two because I already made a full video on how to, uh, you know, how to master the off season of season two when it comes to free agency and the draft. If you guys want to see that, I'll have that popping up on screen right now. So just click the links and until next time thanks for watching man my shit out need more help or just want to show your support then head over to my patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more link in the description below